Since the release of the Steam Deck, Valve's Linux-powered gaming handheld, we've seen a massive increase of gamers playing on Linux. And while Linux still only holds 1.27% of global Steam users, the actual number behind it is far more interesting. Given that Steam has an approximate amount of 60 million users per day, Linux already makes up 3 quarter million users. And that's not a small audience anymore. But while the Steam Deck currently takes up the majority of Linux gamers, it wouldn't be that surprising that the amount of desktop users increases as well. And why not? Gaming on Linux with compatibility layers like Proton has become as easy as ever. And with Microsoft's increasing persistence on forcing users more and more towards the Microsoft Store, open source Linux operating systems could theoretically soon provide the best possible PC gaming experience. But just how good is desktop Linux really? What were the problems that I've experienced personally? How's game compatibility? And ultimately, what makes Linux the better gaming platform? All of these questions and more in today's video, so make sure to click that like button and also subscribe to the channel. Okay, here we go. Gaming on Linux has been interesting for many years. Game compatibility was really not that great and even after Valve announced Proton, a compatibility layer consisting of a mixture of open source Windows translation tools and their own efforts, development was slow. But a lot has changed since then and nowadays I do expect a new game to run straight up on release day. With some exceptions of course, but more on this later. So what is the experience on Linux actually like? Well, let's start off with Steam, since it is the biggest platform after all. Unlike on Windows, where you would go to Steam's homepage to download it, on Linux, most distributions or the individual operating systems already have it in their respectable software centers or repositories. If not, then you can easily install it with Flatpak. You can look up how to install Flatpak for your specific Linux distribution. It's really not hard. And then you just install it, log into your account and start downloading Linux native games. Ah, but what if you want to play a game that isn't natively supported? For that we need Proton and you easily enable it by heading to Steam settings, go to Steam Play and tick this little checkbox. Steam will now use the Proton version that's listed right here. I personally like to switch to the latest official release, but experimental features can also be beneficial for performance and game support. Now you need to restart Steam and start downloading Windows games. However, you might not be able to play all of them. A prime example for this would be Destiny 2. While you can install it, it won't run on Linux, because Destiny uses a custom anti-cheat from BattleEye, which they have not made Linux compatible yet. Actually, quite many multiplayer games that would have Linux native and anti-cheat support do not work because the developer or publisher refuses to enable it. There is a neat little website called ProtonDB, which you can use to check if a game will run or not. Okay, that's nice and all, but what about games that are not on Steam? What about League of Legends, Valorant, Ubisoft or EA games that you bought in their own stores? Well, luckily, there are tools which can run these launchers. I personally like to use Lutris, since it already has shortcuts to the most popular platforms and you don't need to go through the hassle of installing compatibility tools and .exe files manually. If you don't like the interface, however, then another awesome tool is Bottles. Overall, installing and launching games on Linux is not really any different from Windows. Heck, it can even save you time, since you don't necessarily need to look up the installers by yourself. Maybe even expose yourself to malicious downloads, which try to mimic the official sites. But while Linux can be really easy, it can always be kinda hard. What do you do if you want to play multiplayer games like Destiny 2, Valorant or League of Legends, which all have anti-cheat? Well, virtualization is not user friendly and can even get you banned, so don't try it. And dual booting can be a bit of a hassle, but honestly, I don't want to convince you to stop playing a game that you really like. Some few exceptions in the Linux community can be really hostile to that mindset, which is kind of odd because Linux is about choice, but okay. But if you don't have any incompatible games and you use your PC only for gaming, browsing the web or watching videos, then you might want to give Linux a shot. 
because Linux has many advantages over Windows. For once, let's talk about controller support. For some reason, I never had a flawless experience on Windows. Every time I used my Xbox One controller wirelessly with Bluetooth, I had to repair it every single time. And how do I do it on Linux? I add it once, and after that I simply turn it on, and it works. And the best part is, I don't know when exactly it happened, but for quite some time now, you even have to install a whole application for controllers to work on Windows at all. What? I mean Windows is already massive after a fresh installation, and they don't add Xbox controller support by default? Linux has generally less storage demands and includes it. Honestly speaking, if you're mainly playing on a controller or are very big into emulation, then Linux would be the much better choice for you. Another thing that is very important for gaming is communication. And frankly, all of the most used communication channels like Discord, TeamSpeak or even less unknown services are natively supported. While there are still some limitations regarding certain features like screen sharing, this will not be an issue for much longer anymore. Gaming on Linux is awesome. But it's not perfect. I myself have a Windows partition which has Destiny 2 installed, since all of my DLCs are on Steam. This really sucks and many of you are probably in a similar scenario. I really wish that all of my games were supported on Linux. And actually 87% are and I do play them exclusively on Linux. Of course not all games perform similar and some of them even have slightly worse performance, but it's close. And it feels like every one to two weeks, a major update gets announced that improves performance, especially on Wayland. The two things that will probably throw off most people are missing software, for example for configuring your mouse, or when an application suddenly breaks. For example, not that long ago, you had to disable F-Sync in the loot tree settings because otherwise the Ubisoft updater would just get stuck. This luckily got fixed, but try looking up solutions when something similar happens to you. Not every problem, even with similar symptoms, has the same fixes. Because gaming relies on so many different dependencies, Valve's influence on Linux truly boosts development in almost every single way. And it's truly amazing to see that Linux as a desktop or console-like operating system is successful. Because it opens up gaming to a whole new set of devices which don't need to rely on Microsoft anymore. So in conclusion, gaming on Linux nowadays has become so easy that I would trust even casual users to use it effortlessly. And gaming plays a bigger role in development than most really know. And it's really exciting to witness that change. If you've liked this video, then make sure to show it with a like and why not even subscribe to the channel? I mean, you're still watching, so come on. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested in more videos like this, then make sure to watch this one next. And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.